I heard your cries, I heard the people, and yes, they wanted a support video. Well, not everybody, because there's a lot more core players than support players. <laughs> but here we are. In today's video, I'm going to be following a top immortal player playing Lena, absolutely destroying the laning stage. So you're going to learn a couple things here today. How to play Lena, how to dumpster the lane and outplay people as a support, right? Actually have impact in the laning stage and not just be the AFK bot that I know a lot of you are. All right, you can get past it, I'm just letting you know. And on top of that, yeah, I just want to talk about overall positioning, rotations, movement, spellcasting, and we're going to be following a great replay where this Lena goes 8-1 and one and absolutely dumpsters the enemy team. So yeah, if you're excited for that and you like support content, like the video! Otherwise, I'm never making a support video again. That's not a lie. I'm serious. If this video doesn't get over a thousand likes, I'm never making a support video. <laughs> and on top of the content you're going to be seeing today, I recently talked about Necro. I played a Necro game where live, I talked about all of my thoughts and really everything that came to mind. It was a very funny match as they basically gave up early on. But what I discussed was like how to crush the early game, how to really dominate your laning stage and not just go even. Because a lot of people think they're winning. They think they're doing okay. But at the end of the day, they're not really doing that well. So if you're interested in seeing that video, click the link down below to the Game League website. It's over there. I've also made some other videos such as a live Legion game. I've even talked about Titan Hunter recently updating his course. We even have an updated Legion course now. And so there's so many things to check out on the Game League website. Super cheap. A lot of time on our hands, I'm sure right now because of the quarantine that I am also going through. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, so getting into the laning stage, all I want to say for all you position four players playing any sort of ranged hero is that you need to look for auto attacks at every single situation possible. So as we look at this laning gameplay, the first thing he's doing is actually looking to hit the hero. You have very high attack range, and this is something I want to talk about. Attack range often dictates how you have to trade in the laning stage. Now there's a lot of factors, movement speed, attack range, spells, and we're going to look at a very good example here between the Jakiro and the Lina. So right. The Lina starts off with an auto attack and has to disengage because now the Jakiro Q comes out. And when the Jakiro Q comes out, trading becomes far worse for the Lina. It allows the Jakiro to trade favorably. And because of that, the Lina backs off until the duration ends. And that's sort of just like, even though that might seem fundamentally simple, people get this wrong and, and really don't even think about these concepts. So just keep it in your mind. Same thing here. It's like, okay, who wins this trade? Lina or Jakiro? Well, typically it would be the Jakiro because... He beats Lina when they get 1v1 in close range due to the fact that his Q is strong. However, in this scenario, right, the Mars is in position. There is no creep wave for the Jakiro. He's clearly overextended. And therefore, this is a very easy punish for them to get a lot of damage. And therefore, they should man up. And really, you're going to continue to see this trend where he looks for auto attacks. It, basically, every single time you can do it, you want to. And it's almost like playing a mini game of how many autos can I get in without taking damage, right? Like, that's basically what you're trying to get it good at. How many times can I hit them and take as little damage as possible? The next thing I want to talk about is using trees, guys. Vision is the name of the game when it comes to sneaking in autos or not and winning trades in the early game. Vision and trees are the name of the game. So what we're going to see here, right? Stuns the Jakiro, two auto attacks, backs off. Why? Because the troll would slow, then the Jakiro would slow, and he would actually most likely die. So he backs off before that can happen, right? While the stun is ending gets into the trees, and continues to look for autos, abusing the high attack range of Lina. And you can see how effective this is. Now, eventually the Jakiro gets an attack range, but by that time, the Lina has already gotten so many autos off where the trade is generally favorable. On top of that, he ends up making this god bait play that you guys should all see just so you can really think about it. Now, when you're playing a hero that has a long cast point and, and really just will often get you killed if you turn around, what you want to do is exactly what Clutch does here, where he sort of casts it in place. He didn't turn all the way around to the stun to Jakiro. He just kind of casts it next to himself so that his hero model doesn't take forever to turn around. And now because of this, he actually baits in the Troll Warlord, which sets up for a spear with the Mars, actually securing them a very early kill. And yeah, in combination with the tower hits and the Blight Stone, they're able to secure a kill and get the Lina up to level 2. And this is where things begin to get spicy. Now, I was talking to Clutch, and it's the reason why I made the video. Basically, what he was saying is Lina got a buff. What this buff was is that Lina's attack point was reduced from 0.75 to 0.65, and the attack backswing was reduced from 0.78 to 0.6. And what he told me is that this means that Lina can hit a lot more in the laning stage. As is, Lina would auto attack people so much in the laning stage. She's a auto attacking bully in the lane. And then they buffed it, making her even better. And he felt that with this buff, 
You even want to change your skill build to really exemplify this and push it even further. And that's sort of what we're going to see from this engagement. Now, what I want to point out is that he actually, you know, obviously takes the passive at level two. You want to have stun and passive at level two, right? Has his clarities, has his tangos, everything's going well, but he's keeping his stacks going, which is the most important part here. And it's a trend you're going to see throughout the video on Lena. So he's actually using these stacks to keep them built up and keep his attack speed unbelievably high. When you have three stacks of, of Fury Soul, you have 120 attack speed. Do you understand what that means? It means you have six gloves of haste. Six! You have six gloves of haste, right? How insane is that, guys? It's effectively 2,400 gold worth of attack speed, including movement speed on top of that, right? 15%, right? 15% at level one, including the fact that at level three, he takes another point, right? He takes another point, giving him effectively 165 attack speed. I mean, it's pretty insane how fast you attack, but you're going to see it here, right? Over and over and over again, you just auto attack people to death, and you're going to even continue to see him keep up the stacks and look at the damage onto the troll here right jakiro tries to man up oh uh, what are you thinking jakiro bam 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 it's like a 200 damage nuke every second just for moto attacks and yeah it can be a bit hard to sustain this but as long as you use the new buffed clarities right the fact that clarities are more efficient per second and you buy mangoes here and there if you really need them you'll be okay you can full commit to these traits and even if you end up dying at the end of it you're gonna be full mana you come back to the lane and you continue to dominate with this skill build and now before we move on from the landing stage, we're going to see one more example. So you're obviously going to notice that he's continuing to look for a stun over and over and over and over and over again. Guys, when you have your level two, you should be looking for stuns every single second possible. How do you do that? Well, you see people chasing your teammates, right? You bait them in that way, or they're going for last hits and you stun them based off of that. Now in this situation here, they were going on, right? The Mars, they go on the Mars, they overextend. And because of that, with his two stacks, they're all dead. Even the troll here. He tries to man up, but Clutch understands his power. Level 2 stun, 3 stacks, absolutely going to allow him to trade with this troll and even disengage here. 370 movement speed with no boots. It's so hard to deal with this Lena. On top of that, he even buys a wind lace and a boots here. Now, of course, with that last example, he actually did have the wind lace, which helped him out a little bit, but no boots. And with the wind lace here, without any stacks, he now has 370 movement speed. And you can tell this is going to let you maximize the amount of right clicks you can possibly get off. And I want to show you that in this example here, right? So he gets a two man stun. And now with two stacks, he can hit, 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 hit. And if he ever needs to chase at any point, he's going to be able to track them so quickly because you have 400 movement speed with just two stacks of the souls. And the funny thing is, he's actually going to end up getting gone on here, and you're going to see him turn the fight just because of the power of this build. He also has a fairy fire. He started with two to begin this game, which I think is great with this Lena, right? More damage with the high attack speed. And look at this, guys. Gets gone on, lands the stun, pops the fairy fire, and by the time the bounty could come out of it, he was already dead. And yeah, you, hopefully you guys can see the power of this build right now. 3-0-3 just from stunning and auto-attacking people. And if you get good at this, you're going to dominate the laning stages over and over and over again. I mean, if we look at the net worth chart, his mid lost. His top lane lost. Think about that. They lost. If he didn't dominate this laning stage so hard and carry his team's net worth, right? Obviously boosting the Mars here and shutting down the troll. It's GG. It's GG, but that's the power of getting good at your laning stage. And this brings me to my next point. If you feel like you ever lost a game of Dota 2 at the 30 minute mark or 25 minute mark, and you said, oh, there was nothing I could have done in that fight, what you could have done in that fight, well, maybe you're actually right, but what you could have done to fix that problem is look back at your laning stage. Did I have enough impact? Did I auto attack enough? Did I land enough stuns? Am I using my mana? Am I buying the right items? Am I copying high tier players that have perfected this craft? And now you're going to see the full throttle, the full reason why this is so strong and why you have to become a god laner. And this is one of the best strategies to gain an MMR for this exact reason here. When you pick on an enemy safe laner, guys, we all know safe laners have the weakest mentality. That's just the reality of Dota. Like literally safe laners are so weak in the head. And that's what we're going to see here. <laughs> so he comes over, is going to gank the troll warlord who was already Greaves, lands a stun, right? Why was he able to hit that? Baiting the Mars, right? That was one of the two examples I gave. Baiting the Mars. And because of that, you're able to secure the kill. Mars W comes out, Laguna Blade, dead. Instant buyback. <laughs> And that's the thing, guys, like, you might be like, well, this is this is just like a one in every 10, 20, 30 games. But yeah, it is, right? It is. However, if you are 2K, 3K MMR, and you do what Clutch does, and you auto attack this much and get good at this, trust me, you'll get a buyback once every three games, five games. 
And then the, the match is basically over from there. Also want to mention, as a side note guys, if you're not spamming clarities, you will not be able to play Lina before we get into this next fight here. If you don't spam clarities, you can't play Lina. Like, you actually can't play a lot of heroes right now. <laughs> just buy a ton of clarities. They got buffed. They're really good. I, I just think just a PSA. And yeah, now you're going to see the movement speed come into play here. So with the wind lace, with the boots, he's able to just to really zoom around the map. And all of a sudden, they're just going from kill to kill to kill to kill to kill. They find the sniper here, right? Secure it. And he's dead. Really simple. Like, it's really, really simple. You just play super high tempo. You can play absolutely everywhere. And the coolest thing about this hero is the fact that you can farm, which we're going to see in a bit here. You can take a camp here and there. Because you have such good auto attacks, you're going to see he's able to just kill this camp, right? He can literally just kill a full camp, especially with the maxed out slave. And that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to take your first four points into the stun and into the soul, right? For the laning stage, it's going to save you a lot of mana and allow you to spam and keep up your stacks without instantly running out of mana from having two nukes. And then after that, you're going to start maxing out your Q so you can do a lot of long range damage, keep up your stacks even faster, and actually start farming. Next up, we're going to see a smoke play. Guys, if you ever have level 6 on Lina, I recommend you look for a smoke with one other hero that enables Lina, right? And in this case, they find the sniper mid. This is an example of a high MMR support play. Whenever the game goes past 10 minutes, if you're level 6 or higher, find that one other hero. Often it's going to be your position 5, your position 4 and make plays with them. Make plays with them. Buy a smoke, get it going. Play around your level 6 timing. As a support player, guys, I can't recommend enough. Every single game, try to get your 6 a little bit earlier. Get it earlier so that you can make a play around it. And that's what you want to do to be a high impact support. Get your levels up, and then when they're high, go make a play. It could be on literally anybody. Now, in this case, they find the sniper who is the highest net worth on the enemy team, which is obviously the best kill. And you can now see him pinging people. Chama en cuarenta, cuarentena. It's not happy. He's not happy, right? He's not happy at all. And this is the thing. You gank the sniper, right? You ruin the trolls game. Then you get the troll tilted. Now you tilt the sniper. You're winning the mental battle. The mental warfare has been won. And if you guys know anything about Dota, this is a mental game. You gotta win mentally. And now to end off the video, we're gonna see some beautiful Dota. This is how you play high tempo. This is how you play immortal level Dota. You get the game going. You get your mana boots. You get your movement speed, you buy wards, you secure areas, and you run them down. So now in this case, right, they have a ward on the side ground, so they want to invade, right? Please, guys, I don't care what role you are. I know this is a support video, but I do not care. Take the wards and place them down. They're, they're free! I literally can't stand core players complaining about wards now. It actually makes me insane. If you're a support player, yeah, please continue to take them, even if you're a four. Like, it literally does not matter. But as we're going to see, synergizing with the heroes that work well. If you're a top tier support player, you learn how to do this. You learn how to guide your team, right? Keep them going. Tell them what you want them to do, right? Tell them what you want. And that's what we're seeing here. They're playing as four as the Razor Farms. And this is going to keep them high tempo and allow them to snowball the game. Great Arena Mars here into the double stun, into the cogs, into the Q, into the death. And that's where we're going to end the video. Guys, this was a fantastic early game from Lena. If you're looking to dominate your landing stage and you feel like you're, you're, you're unable to do that right now, this is the hero to do that. Lena is a lane dominator. Hopefully you've learned a ton from the concepts that I've described and showed to you here today. Thank you Clutch for this match and hopefully I'll see you in the next one guys. Please like and subscribe to help this channel grow as we're making videos like this every single day. You know how it is, but thanks for watching and peace. And hey guys, remember before you end this video in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you want to get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton. We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, click the link down below and I'll see you there.